everybody. Happy Tuesday. I hope you joined us for the first video when we painted or oil pasteled um, a George O'Keefe style flower. I want to read a book about George O'Keefe for you now. And um, this was read with permission from the publishers, but we will take it down in about a month because that's what they're asking people to do. So this is part of a series. I've read a couple other ones. I think we've read Monet and Van Gogh so far. So if you haven't seen these, those, go back and check them out. Um, this is called Portrait of an Artist. I'm wearing my turquoise because uh, Georgia lived in the Southwest for a big part of her life. And she really loved um, the desert. And she was inspired by things she saw there, skulls and flowers. So I think she's such an amazing artist. She really is one of the most famous artists in history and not just famous women artists, but just famous artists. So um, I wanted to read this book and kind of got the little flower we used in the last tutorial. Sorry, I'm getting a sip of my coffee so I can be ready. <clears throat> so I love the colors in this book. Um, again, this is part of a series. I think there's just four in the series right now. There's one more on Frida Kahlo and we'll read her for sure. This one is illustrated by Alice Weitzel and they're written by Lucy Brownridge. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna keep my little, I have these beautiful orchids I showed you in the last video. I really wanted to put, can you see them? I really wanted to put them in here, but I just can't figure out how to, I wish I could figure out how to have them in there, but orchids are pretty delicate and I do not want to break off a branch. So we'll just have a little daffodil. But this is one of her pieces. This is a postcard from my friend Lacey from a long time ago that I am so happy I kept, but um, this is one of George O'Keeffe's pieces. So, Portrait of an Artist, George O'Keeffe. George O'Keeffe grew up on a wheat farm in a place called Sun Prairie, and Sun Prairie is in Wisconsin, if you didn't know that. I didn't know that George O'Keeffe was from our state until, until I think a year ago, so that's so cool. She had six brothers and sisters. Of all her brothers and sisters, Georgia was the most thoughtful. She loved the big skies, vibrating orange sunshine, and beautiful flowers on the prairie. When she looked at flowers of ears of corn, she would think very hard about the shapes of each tiny part and wondered how they could all possibly grow from the dry earth. As soon as she was old enough, she went to art school in Chicago in New York City so she could learn how to make pictures of the beautiful things she saw in the world around her. What I like about these books is that they have the illustrated pictures but they also have these insets, actual pictures of the artist. So they have a print of her actual, so I think there's like 10. So see if you can spot them. So this is one of hers. Living in the big city was wonderful. It was so busy and glamorous compared to the stillness of the farm. At art school, she learned how to paint very traditional things like dark shadowy bowls of fruit or bunches of flowers. Although she loved New York, the picture she made didn't fill her with the same wonder as the wide open landscape she had loved at home. One day when Georgia was at school, she, at art school, she got a letter from her mother who was very sick. Georgia had to move home and be with her. When she went back, she started working in her old high school as an art teacher. She wanted to teach the children in a completely new way and not the stuffy way she had been taught. What are they doing in this class? Look at these cool paintings you're making. Instead of making, making things look realistic, she encouraged her students to use bright colors and bold shapes and not to worry too much about whether you could tell what the picture was meant to be. Georgia loved teaching art, but she still thought about the busy excitement of New York. She often wrote to her friend who still lived in the city, and one day she put a few of her sketches inside a letter to her. Her friend saw that the, this was before email, which I think is so cool. You just had to send things. Her friend saw that the drawings weren't ordinary, but very special. So she passed them on to a man named Alfred Stieglitz. Alfred had been an important photographer and owned his own gallery. So a gallery is somewhere that you show art. Show art and buy, it's like an art store, a special museum art store type thing, yeah. 
Alfred was amazed by George's drawings. He wrote to her to ask if she would do them the honor of showing her pictures in his gallery. Georgia agreed and was nervous but excited. It was strange to be back in the big city and this time her art was a show in the hottest spot in town. She filled the show with charcoal drawings and watercolors and all sorts of glamorous people came to see what she had made. Her success gave her a new confidence. She realized she could show people things they already knew but in a completely new way. This was her gift. So here's one of hers. I love this one. You can see this is one of the close, close-up views of the flower. Georgia was proud of her show, but not satisfied. She felt her charcoal pictures were bold, but not colorful enough. And her watercolor pictures were colorful, but too watery. She started to use oil paint because the colors were as bright and bold as the colors in nature. Oil paint could look as deep and velvety as the middle of a jewel-like flower. And that is exactly what she started to paint. She wanted to make tiny flowers big, important and unmissable. They were so close up, you could hardly tell what they were. No one had done this before. So here she looks like she's kind of in a greenhouse and um, you could go somewhere like the domes in Milwaukee. They have flowers blooming even in the middle of winter. You could go look at flowers to draw, bring a sketchbook or um, in Minneapolis, there's Como Park Zoo. There, you could go into the gardens. There's lots of places to go look close up at flowers. As Georgia grew happier, she started to notice beauty in the city where she hadn't seen it before. At first, the cold, harsh skyscrapers had made her feel small. Now their towering watch was comforting and made her feel powerful. The buildings looked as beautiful to her as mountains. And she fell in love with New York she also fell in love with Alfred in no time at all. The pair were married and became towering giants of the New York art scene. The whole of New York wanted to see what Georgia would paint next. Here's one of them. This looks kind of like ours. Not the same one, but... But Georgia didn't let the pressure get to her. Georgia and Alfred were very happy. They traveled together and Georgia painted more and more. Alfred even started taking photographs again. Georgia's enthusiasm for life revived the artist inside him too. But Alfred was much older than Georgia and started to become sick. So this is what we call a landscape. We've talked about landscapes and seascapes. This is one of her landscapes. Alfred had to stay at home more and more and Georgia discovered new places by herself. She visited New Mexico where the hot desert mountains gave her the same excitement, feeling of excitement as the big city skyscrapers had. They felt old and wise, but also like something new and just for her. The wide open space gave her time to think about new paintings and about the complicated feelings of sadness she had about Alfred being unwell. Very soon, her beloved and inspiring Alfred passed away. While Georgia was terribly sad, she had so many ideas to put into her pictures. She started to paint more than ever, and from now on, painting would become her entire life. Now she was famous. Everyone in the city had an opinion on what her art meant and what she should do next. But Georgia had no time for being bossed about by art people in the city. New York was no longer the place for her. Nature was calling her back. So here's some of her skulls. And if you go to the Milwaukee Art Museum with your family, um, they have lots of Georgia O'Keeffe paintings. So we're really lucky to have some of her work at the museum. So she moved to New Mexico where her heart leapt just as it had the time she first painted flowers and then skyscrapers. Her new great love was the powerful shape of the mountains, the big sky, and the hot earth. She lived in a house built from red earth. It reminded her of the beautiful red mountains of the nearby ghost ranch, which always loomed large in her imagination. From the port she even had, view, from the port she even had a view onto what she called her own private mountain, it was so far from people, she called it far away nearby. She felt that her new surroundings connected her to nature and the bare bones of life. She spent day after day roaming the plains and finding strange objects that she couldn't wait to take home and paint. One summer she, oh, you guys, this is so cool to our people meeting, to our giants meeting. We'll read about Frida too. 
One summer, she traveled to show her paintings in Mexico and met another brilliant painter called Frida Kahlo. Okay, you guys, I gotta pause and show you this. Let me see if I can find it. Look, we'll read about Frida Kahlo soon. Anyway, I just think that's cool. They became close friends and Georgia inspired Frida to follow her own path and not to listen to other people if they told her what she should paint. Frida listened very carefully and went on to become the most famous painter Mexico had ever seen. Georgia was still busy. She flew all over the world opening shows and meeting glamorous people, but after a while she wondered if that was what she wanted. As she looked out of the airplane window, she longed to be home and to paint the big skies. Ooh, this is a really cool one. If you can see this one, I'm going to hold it up a little bit because I know it's far. So that painting down there with the clouds, skyscape, it's huge. It's really huge. It takes up a huge wall in the museum in Chicago. So if you can ever go, this is a really neat painting to see in person. It's very different seeing something this big and then standing in front of it on the whole wall. So this is a really awesome painting. As Georgia became older and her eyesight started to fade, she traveled less and less and spent time where she found real happiness. Georgia had achieved more than she had ever imagined and was known the world over as the mother of American modernism. She was pleased, but she didn't live to impress others. All she lived for was the sky, the earth, and to paint. At last, she was peacefully alone in nature with a brush in her hand. So I like these books because in the back, they show you and give you some more information about the real paintings. I'm sure they'll paint box. So I'm gonna end the video there because I know I've already talked to that today, but I'm gonna show you the Frida one because we can read that next time. It's kind of cool to see these buddies. They a lot of artists were influenced by each other, so I'm gonna bring up our orchid. I bet these two would have liked knowing that there was oop, that's right in the way in the picture. I'll just show it to you again and then I'll put it down. Anyway, there's our art book today and watch the video if you haven't already about how to make your own Georgia O'Keeffe style observational drawing or painting and I'll see you again soon.